Hello and welcome everyone to this installment of my Procreate for Beginners series. In this video we're going to talk about three things that are more advanced that were in the Layers Options menu that I didn't get to in my Layers video. Which was the video that came out previously to this, and especially if you haven't seen that one, you should go back and watch that one first about Layers in general. That will help your understanding of this video. But I also have other videos in this series already, and there are ones that are going to come after this. So I will link the playlist in this video in the description and in the cards and at the end of the video. That will include all of these videos that I'm talking about. But if you want to go to my channel and search for it, it's under Procreate and Digital Art, that playlist. So that will have all of these videos in it. But anyway, today we're going to talk about those three things in the Layer Options menu that I said in the Layers menu we'd get to in a different video. That is the Reference Layer, a Clipping Mask, and a Layer Mask, which is known as just a mask in the Layer Options menu, but it's technically called a Layer Mask. But we're going to talk about those three things in this video, so let's get to it. Okay, so again, I'm going to be showing you a few things that you can do in the Layers Options menu. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, because you didn't see my video previous to this about layers, so this button here will take you to layers. Every time you open a new document, it'll give you this background color layer, which you can only change the color of, you can't do anything else to. And then another layer on top, layer one. You can always rename it to something else if you want. So that's what happened here. Uh, I drew something on layer one so I can show you these concepts, but just to review, you can add a new layer by adding, by hitting this plus sign. It'll add it on top of the layer you have selected, which is the blue one. If a layer is already selected, you can click over here and it'll come up with this in, uh, layer options menu. And we went over some of these things in the layers video. What we didn't really go over was reference, clipping mask, and mask. So we're going to look at those today. We're going to take another look at the alpha lock because that's something that kind of helps explain these um, concepts as well, so we'll look at that again today. But if you want to know what the rest of these things are, that's going to be in the layers video that came out before this, so if you haven't seen that, you should go back and watch that. And these concepts are all a little more advanced, so really you should go back and watch that if you haven't. Now, so what I did here on layer one, I just drew this, kind of looks like an O, or donut, or a very thin donut. <laughs> um, but what we're going to do is we're going to say, like, this is our line drawing for drawing something. And if we wanted the lines to show on our art, this is kind of the concept where this comes into play. So what I mean is, let's say you wanted to color drop a different color into here. Actually, I think that's might be the same color color drop a different color into here. You could do that on this layer, just color drop it in. Now you're on the same layer, you're on layer one, and you got these two different colors. But if you wanted to do something independently to either the line or the color inside, it would be a lot harder to do. So what you can do to get around that, what I'm going to show you is, um, you would be doing it in layer two and doing the same thing and they would be separate if you were to make layer one your reference. But I'm going to show you why you need to do that. So if you were to do a color drop into layer two, there's nothing in there right now. So it's just going to go over the entire thing. And you can't even do the threshold. So let me show you that again. You can't even do anything with the threshold. It doesn't you know, fix it. So in order to color this color into those lines only, you could go and manually do it if you really want to. But what you can do is make layer one your reference layer. So go down here to reference. And then in layer two, you can just color drop into it like this because it's using the lines of layer one as its reference but it's still separate. So 
just to illustrate that, I can show you, so let's say you wanted to kind of put a texture over the paint color, this green paint color, the lighter green, in the donut or the O, but you didn't want it to affect the lines. That's why we separated them. So let's say you would take this dark blue here and get a different brush, like this blotchy one right here. Now if you color on layer two on, well, first of all, you could color over the whole thing like this, but if you remember, alpha lock locks everything that's not, doesn't have, like the transparent parts of that layer are now locked, so you can't draw anything on them. So I can't draw over here or here or even on this blue line. You can just draw on the green and you can get kind of this textured look depending on which brush you use. But you keep the that bluish line from layer one intact. It doesn't have any splotchiness to that. It's just the line. So if that's the look you're going for, that's what you would use this for, sort of. And I think there are other things that people use them for. But this is just kind of to illustrate like the main thing you would use it for. That's like basically if you want to preserve your line work in your art. All right, so the next thing I'm going to show you is a clipping mask. So what I did is just added a color and changed lift to layer one, made it my background rather than this. I'm just going to turn that off. Um, what I'm going to do is make a clipping mask on layer two that affects the background layer. So, well, actually, I could make another. Yeah, let's make another layer in between. So it's going to affect this layer in here. So what I'm going to do is, on this middle layer, I'm going to just write something. So I'm not very creative right now. I'm just going to write hello. So what I can do is, on layer two, I'm going to turn this off for the time being and then I'm going to use let's see I know we haven't gone over these brushes very well or very much I'm gonna go with this bokeh lights and I'm gonna use let's see I think I could use classic that would probably be better get kind of a gray color. I'm not sure how big this is going to be, but oh, that's very big. All right, well, let's do that as kind of the background, and then let's make this a little smaller, because I know our writing was right over here. Now, making this a clipping mask is going to affect the layer below, so where we wrote hello, it's going to get, this is going to come into it, if that makes sense. So let me show you. Clipping mask. This is supposed to be on. Yeah, you can kind of barely see it. I should have maybe made this bigger. But you see how those bokeh lights, or whatever they are, are kind of in the writing now. So basically it's another way to add like texture to something. You could also do this with a picture. So if you had a picture of either like a shiny material or some other textured material that you want or even just a picture if you want to like put like your family into a certain shape or something you could do that on here with the clipping mask as well. Um, in fact when I go over my projects I might do something like that so you can demonstrated. I haven't gotten to my projects yet, so, but we're going to do some more exercises with the clipping mask, but this is just kind of to give you an idea what you can do. Actually, maybe what I want to do is do, make this a different color so it's easier to see. So I'll show you how to do that. You can select this layer and then select the color you want. I kind of feel like it should be like a red or something. 
and then hit fill layer. See, now you can kind of see it a little better. So it's taking what's on this layer, which you can't really see anymore because I put the clipping mask on, but you can kind of see in the thumbnail here, this is what we drew on that layer and it's taking it and putting it into whatever's on this layer. It's sort of like a background kind of thing, abstract, texture, whatever. Like I said, you can do photos, but that's kind of how you can use that. Again, I'm going to go over this again in a more practical way when we do projects, but this is just to kind of show you the concept. Okay, so now we're going to do a layer mask. So sort of the same thing. You go to your layer that you want to affect here and you hit mask and it'll come up. Oops. <laughs> Let me try that again. So sort of the same thing here. You hit mask. It'll come up with this layer mask on top of this layer and that's because it only affects that layer. Now whatever you draw on this layer mask, which is selected now because it's the brightest blue, whatever you draw on there in black will erase whatever's on that layer. So let's say you mess something up. Let's say, oh, we don't want this part of the O there. It's a little too much. Oops, I'm getting quick shapes here. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> or, you know, the end here. I didn't want it so big. Let's take that off. And you're only affecting the layer below it that it's connected to. Same over here, let's say. So let's say you took off too much off that. What you can do is use white. Again, double tap will get you true white. And you can just add it back on as much as you want. Say you want it to come out a little bit more. Just kind of depends on you know what's on your layer what you can do but so you can add it back on if you change your mind or whatever so another thing you can do is it basically works in grayscale so you can use gray as well like a gray color move this down a little bit and what you can do is kind of mess with the opacity of parts of the lettering that's on that layer or whatever you're drawing. So you see that this is making it a little more transparent when you draw with a gray. And if you would do like a lighter gray, it would it would show a little more. And if you do a darker gray, it would be more like black. So it would take more away. So black basically brings it down to zero opacity. And white is like full capacity, 100%. And then you've got, you know, the shades in between that are different percentages. Basically, that's what's happening. But you can only really work with white, black, and gray on this layer in order to, you know, bring things out or show them again or bring the opacity down or up, you know, depending on what you want to do. So that's another w reason you would use that. So I know this is a very, very simple way of explaining it and it doesn't really make sense. Like I said, we're going to be doing more practical projects in the future that will make a little more sense. I'm just trying to explain the concepts simply now for beginners because that's what this is for. So just to give you an idea of what that is and what you can do. Also, once if you don't want the layer lamp mask anymore, you see that these are both selected, you can just delete this and it won't delete your other layer. It'll just delete the layer mask. So those are those three things. Again, not a whole lot but they were a little more complicated than everything else. So this is a shorter video, but we are going to be getting to more things. In fact, we'll talk about that next. And as I have said, there is more coming in this series, going through all these concepts at the very basic beginner level. And then we're going to start getting into projects that show you a more practical way of using things. So you can create your own things, like I said. 
So I added a few more things to this list that I made different, you know, groups of what I want to talk about. So I have selections and transformations. That's going to be coming up soon. Drawing guides and assistance. I went over some of that in the intro video, but we're going to go over it again in more depth, obviously. I am going to go through the brush library that comes with Procreate and kind of show you what all those brushes do and what you can use them for. We're going to look at the brush studio where you can make your own brushes. We're going to look at the adjustments menu. And then eventually we're going to talk about some animations, some very simple animations and basic concept of how you would make an animation. So we're going to be talking about all that. Plus the etc. is kind of things like learning how to import and export things. Um, how to insert text, which we kind of went over in the intro video. But we're going to look closer at that. And insert pictures, which we kind of already done, but I'm going to show you how to do that. And again, with the time lapse recording, show you that again. All that's going to be kind of in the same. I might have a name for it by then. <laughs> I'm not sure. All those kind of things are kind of like very basic background kind of things that you need to know. And I don't know what to, what to call that category, basically. So right now it's etc. Um, but that's what you have to look forward to. And I will see you in the next one.